Hello everyone. Welcome back to my money lessons. My name is Dr. Charity Ezengwa Onako. I am the founder of Wealthy Gen. Our mission at Wealthy Gen is to empower women and young adults with financial education to help them make money, save more money, invest smartly, become debt free and build a wealthy generation. Our overall goal is to help our users achieve financial well-being. And because financial well-being can mean different things to different persons, my message for you today is to ignore everyone and save money. I'm going to say that again. Ignore everyone and save money. That means you got to focus on doing those things that help you live life on your own terms. Not on anyone else's terms, but on your own terms. So what that means is that whatever financial well-being means to you, focus on saving money to achieve that. Saving money matters a lot. In fact, liquid savings is one of the key measures of financial well-being. And studies show that liquid savings or savings or having a financial cushion is one of the key difference between those who have strong or high financial well-being and those who have low financial well-being. Here is an interesting statistic. 65%. 65%. This is the percentage of families who lack liquid savings to protect themselves against any income cuts or any expenditure spikes. This is based on a 2019 report by JP Morgan Chase Institute and it shows that 65% of families do not have any savings at all to shield themselves or protect themselves if they should have any cuts in income or if their expenses should rise beyond normal. So with this in mind, we are going to focus on savings. We're going to focus on saving money so that we protect ourselves against any unexpected cuts in income or any unexpected rises in our expenditures. So with that said, here are those four voices we should not listen to and why. The first one is that we need to ignore anyone or any voices that tells us that we shouldn't worry about saving money simply because we are already making high income. The truth is making high income alone does not determine financial well-being. This is because you could be making high income and you turn around and spend all of it. So although you are able to meet your day-to-day -day expenses and your month-to-month -month expenses without any savings at all, you are exposing yourself. You run the risk of not having any cushion if there's an unexpected cut in your income or if your expenses should just rise unexpectedly. So what this means is if you are making high income, this is good. But you need to ignore any voices or anyone telling you that because you are, you are a high income earner, you don't need to worry about savings. Yes, you do need to worry about savings. So focus on saving money. Ignore those voices. Focus on saving money so that you are building protection. You are cushioning yourself against any financial shock so that you know that you are working for your future. If anything should happen, if your income should be cut, if your expenses should rise, you have what it takes to stay financially stable second voice we need to stop listening to is that voice that tells you that you don't even make enough money to cover your expenses so there's no need to save now i've had a lot of people tell me this and this is one voice that we need to stop listening to i've got some people ask me how can they possibly save money when they don't even have enough money to meet their needs now, I completely understand how challenging it can be trying to live and manage you and yourself, yourself and your family on the low income and that it may be difficult trying to save money in such situation. But hear this. This is the time for you to cultivate strong saving habits. So what you can do is ignore those voices that tell you you can do it because you can. You just got to believe it. So what you do is out of the little income you already make, save a little bit of it. You're not talking about saving a lot of money here, just a tiny bit out of the little money you already make. Make Even if it's a dollar or two, save it before you start spending. What this means is that once you form these strong saving habits, when your income increases, it becomes very easy for you to save even more money. And when you do that, you will see how impact, how great an impact that can make in your finances. And you will begin to turn your finances around just by saving money 
out of your little income. The third one, you see that voice that tells you to charge all of your expenses on your credit cards? After all, it's other people's money. We are not going to listen to that voice. Not that we are not going to use our credit cards or charge our expenses to our credit cards or that we are not going to use other people's money. Yes, we can. But we have to be strategic and intentional about it. There are three parts to using other people's money. The first is the people who charge all of their cards, all of their expenses on their credit cards because those expenses are for a project or for a business and they're anticipating to get some returns back from those projects or that business. Now, if the return you expect from that project or that business far outweighs the risk or the interest associated with using that card, then say yes to that voice. You can charge those expenses to your credit cards because you're going to get some returns back and you can use those returns to offset whatever interest or whatever cost that's associated with using that card. But if the returns you're expecting from that business or that project is not enough to cover the cost of using that credit card, then you need to say a big no to that voice. Now, the second part is the people who charge all of their expenses on their credit cards because they're expecting to get some kind of rewards, some kind of discount or some kind of points by using that card. Now, if you get some kind of uh, those kind of rewards by using your cards, then you can use it because some of those uh, cards, some of those rewards or points or discounts will require you to, uh, to use your credit cards before you can benefit from that. So if this is you, you can use those credit cards to benefit or take advantage of those rewards or those discounts or those points. But the key is that you have to have enough savings to pay off the balances on those cards at the end of the period. Why am I saying this? Because you might take advantage of a 20 or 25% discount and you don't pay your bills at the end of the month. By the time you get to pay the bills, you've accumulated interest more than the returns or discounts you may have received in the first place. So for you to make this worthwhile, make sure you've saved enough money so that at the end of the period, you're going to pay the balances on that card off completely at the end of the month. What this means is that you've taken advantage of your discounts or your points or your rewards, and then you go ahead and pay it off without paying any interest. When you do this, you're setting yourself up for success. You're building your credit score. You're building your credit profile and you're taking advantage of the discounts or rewards or points that came with it. So that's why you need to be strategic and intentional on how you use it. Now we have the third part, which is the group of people that just charge everything on their credit cards, not because there's a business or project involved, not because there's any rewards or discounts or coupons they're going to get out of it, simply because they do not have money to spend. They do not have their own money to spend and therefore they charge it on credit cards. If this is you, we need to stop listening to that voice that tells us, this is not, it's other people's money. I don't have money, so I'm going to charge it on my card. Now, having a credit card is not, is not a ticket for you to start spending money. You got to do that responsibly. If this is you, we got to say no to that voice. So my strategy for you, or my lesson, or my message for you now is to focus on saving money. Ignore that voice. Is other people's money. Mm -mm. Ignore that voice and focus on saving money. Prepare your budget each month and list the things you really want to buy and then save money towards buying those things. Once you've saved enough to buy that item, then you can go ahead and buy it. But if you decide to use other people's money and continue to charge on your credit cards, you are not only setting yourself off, up for failure, you are, um, your financial profile is being um, neglected, your credit score, and before you know it, you're piling up debt. Remember, our goal is to become debt free. Our goal is to live financially well. So say no to that voice and focus on saving money so that you're setting yourself up for success. When you save money before you do other things, you're improving your finances. You're putting yourself together and setting yourself up so that in the future, you've built a foundation that you can rely on. So the fourth voice that we need to stop listening to 
it's that voice that tells you don't worry about your kids they'll be just fine when they grow up they'll figure their finances out just spend your money now that your life your kids will be just okay now this is one voice that we need to stop listening to because the foundation the financial foundation you lay for your kids now is a key factor in shaping their financial future think about this imagine your kids graduating from college with tons of student loans imagine them graduating from college with an already bad credit score how can they possibly kick off their financial life with all of these baggages think about this now flip that coin and imagine your kids graduating from college already paid for imagine them graduating from college with an excellent credit score imagine them coming out of school with assets in their names isn't that good now with strong money principles you've laid or instilled on them they will take it up from there and they will start building the wealth for themselves right away and because they learned all of these good money principles from you this they will pass on to their kids and that's how you build a wealthy generation now these are the four voices i have for you that we need to stop listening to and save money but I know there are a lot of other things that we need to stop listening to, right? And I love to read them. So share them in the comment section below. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've ho I hope that you found it useful. If you did, share this with your best friends. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've not already done so and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video.